when we talk about gradient and vertical insert, insert, thank you. We are trying to understand, all right, well, I can plot this and draw it, that's nice, but I want to know about its features, right? Understanding its features will tell me a lot more about it. So gradient, well, can someone, a lot of you put your hands up, can someone give me like a one sentence explanation of what gradient is? Okay, so the way I calculate it, and we might, we might as well write this because we are going to get there eventually. The way that we calculate gradient is this nice, easy to remember alliterated fraction. Okay, rise over run. That's good, we're going to refer to that in a second. However, it doesn't tell us what gradient is, like what it means. Anyone want to advance on that? Okay, so a, a synonym and a really helpful one for gradient is slope, and you'll hear that used interchangeably, they mean the same thing. Do you want to add something um, else? The steepness of the line. Yeah, that's really good. So I think all these concepts together, and I'm going to highlight this on the throw set in a second, they all tell us what gradient is. I think steepness is maybe the most helpful one, right? Because it gives you a picture, and it being cross-country day, I'm not going to um, labor the point, but it gives you a sense for if something is steeper, we say it has a larger gradient. Okay? So if this was a really steep line, its gradient would have a really high value. And if it was kind of just shallow, then we'd say it has a low value. In fact, a gradient of like a flat line, okay, it's not rising anymore. So we say it's gradient zero. Okay? Now, this rise over run business, let's put this onto our diagram. If you've got another color there, you should have some graph on there. It doesn't matter too much what it looks like. But the important thing is to understand, if you take any two points on here, any two points. So for example, I've got two, I start and an end. I want to know how far am I going up? That looks like that distance there. And that's what we call rise. How far have we ascended? Versus how long horizontally did it take for us to go that far up? So this is the horizontal distance that corresponds to it. That's run. It really is convenient that it's cross country. So rise over run, it's a fraction. Okay? You can see, like I mentioned, if you don't rise anywhere, if you've just got a flat line, rise will be zero. So then it doesn't matter what run is. Zero over anything will still be zero, right? So we might add that in. A grain of zero, which means there's no rise, a grain of zero means it's a line which is, well, it's just flat, right? I guess the technical word would be, it's horizontal. Okay. So gradient of zero means it's just flat across, horizontally. What would a gradient of one look like? Hmm. If I said rise over run, don't write this part down, just so you can see what I'm thinking. If I said rise over run, was equal to 1. What would that mean about the relationship between rise and run? Yeah, they're the same, right? And if you pull back your algebra skills, you can see I can just multiply both sides by this denominator, right? Can you see it? I'm going to get this, yes? You following? So a grain of 1 would look like, and if you can add this on your diagram, in fact, take whatever distance your run is. Just have a look at whatever your diagram looks like. Take that and measure the same distance vertically. Make the rise the same. So on my diagram, that looks something like this. Okay. Now I'm hoping that you all have diagrams that look a little bit different to the person next to you. But the important thing I want you to notice is, have a look at this rise run triangle that you just made. Okay. Rise here, run here. If you look at the triangle of the person next to you as well, there might be different sizes but they're all going to look very similar to each other. Do you notice that? In fact, because this side is the same as this side, we give this triangle a special name. Two sides are the same, starts with an I. It's isosceles, right? We've made an isosceles triangle. Um, this side is the same as this side. What's this angle look like to you? If this is right. vertical. This is, right. this is a right angle, isn't it? So, if this is a right angle, okay, we're killing it today, right? It's an isosceles triangle. So these other two angles over here have to be the same as well, right? Sides are the same, angles are the same. That's 90. What are those two angles going to be? 45. They're both going to be 45, okay? 
So we can add this underneath where we said a gradient of 0 means a horizontal line. A gradient of 1 means a line that's 45 degrees from the horizontal. 45 degrees. <laughs> um, the technical word is an inclination. You might remember from last year, um, angles and inclination, like elevation, depression, that type of thing. 45 degrees, that's pretty steep. But this is what we mean by a gradient of 1, just so you have a picture in your head. Just for a second, ignore the diagram you've got in front Can of we you. Leave the lights on? Yeah, that's fine. Have a look at my diagram for a minute. Um, have a look at the original black and blue triangle that I drew. It's white. It clearly has a gradient. Shut up, Akil. <laughs> It was pretty bad. Um, it clearly has a gradient that's less than 1. Do you see that? It's not as steep. Like the green line is steeper. Yes? So this gradient here, it's like, it's less than 1, but it's more than 0. It's going to be a fraction of some kind. Do you agree? Mm -hmm. So I just want you to get a picture, like a physical sense for, when you get different numbers, what does that mean in your head? What if you had a gradient of 2? What would that look like? It'd be really steep, right? Come in. It's going to go twice as high for the same run. Mm. Oh, oh How's it going? Do you remember us from last week? Oh, I don't remember me. That's not that one. I'm, I'm so proud of it. Okay. I never know what it was like. Did you just see that? It's amazing. That was the guy off the voice, wasn't it? Now go away. I swear. I don't I don't I I not I I I Yeah, he said you're really annoying. He just wanted to make a point to remind me of that. Okay. Um, let's go ahead and finish this concept so you guys can get started and I'll finish my conversation. This idea of gradient, right? Again, I think the key concept, I'm so glad it was mentioned, is, is steepness. Like, how steep is something? And we just finished by saying, if I had a gradient of 2, it means for this amount of run, I'm going twice as high. I don't want to have to run off that, okay? It's a very, very steep thing. What that corresponds to is, can you turn back a page, or maybe it's even on the page you've got at the moment, where we were looking at oranges. Do you remember that? Mm -hmm. Now, look at the gradient, the steepness the of there. that line. Okay. In fact, I want you to do more than that. I want you to calculate it the way we calculated it, right? Go back, have a look at, for example, you've got a whole bunch of spots where they're one distance apart, right? Like one to two, two to three, oh, so four, etc. Right? So gradient is going to be rise over run. So pick any two points you like. If you like, do it the way we did it. Pick the end and pick the start. Work out, well, okay, in that space, how far has it risen versus how far is it Run. Okay. Now just quickly go and do that. You've got all of the numbers there, right? If I recall, we went up to like six kilos or something, right? Yeah. We got to six kilos? Okay. Yeah. So that's this horizontal. It's the is it the dependent or the independent variable? Which one? The, the number of kilos. It's independent. independent, right? We tend to put independent here. Maybe we're gonna like Yes sir. Independent, dependent. So that represents run. Yeah? Over six. What's the highest value that we got? What number value is in dollars? No, Twenty-five dollars? Oh no, that was just what we have on our graph. Yeah. But that is that's based on the plotting, right? Twenty-one sounds more likely. Sorry. That's okay. We're in the right ballpark. Those are expensive oranges. Okay, now just quickly have a look at this, right? Twenty-one divided by six. What is this number? This number should be familiar. It's definitely 3... It's 3.5, right? 3 dollars 50. What Whoa. significance does that number have? That's how much they cost per kilo. That's the cost, Whoa. right? Whoa. So gradient... Oh my God. Why do I just do it like that instead of doing it? Well, 
We are. So this connection here is what I'm trying to draw out to you, right? The gradient is more than just like, oh, how, how much is it? It's actually telling you something meaningful about the data that you've got. Now, we're not surprised by this because this is our starting point. Like the first sentence says, oranges are sold for $3 a kilo, right? So it began like that. But questions were often not. Like, our task will be to find out what's going on, to get to the bottom of it. What is the cost, or what's the population, or how's it going, or whatever. Okay? So that's what grading is. I'm really briefly, and there's not much to say really about it, going to describe this, because I think it's almost on the diagram. Vertical, right? We're talking about this axis over here. Intercept. What does intercept mean? Like it's when two things cut or meet, right? Which is why when you play in touch with a ball and you pass and someone intercepts the ball, it's because they and the ball are the same place at the same time. Okay? So the vertical intercept, maybe if you have another color there, is this spot over here. It's where our graph, I've got the black graph here, it's where the graph intercepts with the vertical axis. So this is the vertical intercept. Now, if you recall back to quantum geometry last year, or maybe if you don't remember, that's okay, we used to call these x and y, like we frequently call them x and y, right? Since the vertical one is so often called y, we often call this the y-intercept. I hope that phrase like sort of rings a bit of a bell, right? It's not always y, though. It might be cost, it might be time, it might be kilometers. But the important thing is it's the intercept on this, the dependent variable. Okay? 